Hi, thanks for watching me. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Today I'm going to do a video called How I Receive Psychic Information. You know, a lot of people actually ask me, they email me, they text me, they send me um, Facebook messengers, and they say, Linda, how many things do you do? So today I'm going to do a little collection of some stories that have happened to me. You may think it's weird. You may think, oh my God, this cannot be true. But stay tuned because I'm going to try and debunk how I get these situations that arise with me, okay, as a psychic. So first thing though, there's a couple of little clauses that I want to say first. One, everybody gets their information differently. Every psychic that you can go to, they all sense, feel, hear, or just know their information differently, okay? If you're trying to develop these skills that I'm going to talk about today, because <laughs> some of them are really cool by the way, so please watch. Um, <laughs> some, of, some of the things that people say to me is, do I have to do it exactly the same as you? No, you've got to find your own unique and natural way to do these, okay? So I'm going to explain how I get it. I'm not being egotistical here because this isn't a daily event with me, right? People who know me, you know this is real every day. So please know everyone gets their information differently. Second one is we don't know what gifts we've got unless we try them, right? How do we know if we're good at swimming unless we're put in water? How do we know if we're good at riding a bike unless we get on a bike and try it? So when I talk about these little stories today, think about, oh my God, I've never actually tried that. <laughs> All right, so let's get into something. Um, a couple of people have contacted me this week and said, is it true that I talk to plants and trees? <laughs> Up until when I died in 2001, I never thought I could talk with trees. Did I have the ability back then as a child? I probably did. But like I just said, unless I tried it, I didn't know I had it, right? So when I woke up from the coma after I was um, dead, let's just go there. Um, I came home and I was sitting at the front in the front yard. You know, I'd just gotten out of ICU. So hello, look, here's my needle marks where I was in ICU um, I was still quite not very strong I was very weak so I was sitting out in the front yard just looking at this thing feeling the suns on my face and I heard Linda now it wasn't a voice inside my head it was like someone standing about six foot away because my ears pricked towards the noise and I heard Linda so I'm looking around and where I was, I was sitting on the front, there was three steps going up to the front door and we had two huge maple trees in the front yard. So they're on either side of the pathway. And I'm looking around to the neighbors' houses thinking, who just called me? And there was nobody around. So I'm just thinking, yeah, Linda, you're just going nuts. You know, you've just got out of ICU, it's all right. And about half a minute later, Linda! So it made me jump. Linda! And I'm looking around again, and this time my ears actually did prick to the noise. And I realised who, it, well, it wasn't a who, what was talking to me was the big maple tree to my left. I actually thought I was insane at that point. Because I was looking at the tree thinking, oh my God, I just heard that noise from the tree. What? So I looked at the tree and I just put out this intention of being nice. No fear, no threat. And I looked at the tree and I said to it out loud, was that you? And I heard nothing. 
and I thought yeah I'm just going insane here so it was pretty making my head pretty confused at this point so I didn't really want to let it go so I looked back at the tree and I said if that was you can you move <laughs> like I was expecting it to move right but it did the whole tree now we're talking probably three stories high you know if you've ever seen a maple tree they're massive trees the whole tree did this movement the other tree on the other side didn't move the trees across the road didn't move there was no wind no breezes no rain no nothing it was a sunny day and this whole tree did this quiver and all these leaves fell down out of it and that sort of freaked me out a little bit right and I just thought oh my god what do I do now um <laughs> so I got up and I walked over to the tree and I hugged it put my arms around its oh it was quite large this tree put my arms around this tree and I just thought thank you so much for letting me know what did it know hang on let's go there did that tree have a thinking process? Did that tree have a consciousness? Did that tree have the ability to think of questions and answers? What? It's a tree! But then I realised, yes, it does. They can't see because they haven't got eyes. They don't hear because they haven't got ears. They can't talk because they don't have a tongue or a mouth. But these living beings have a consciousness. So from that point onwards, now that was 2001. So from that point onwards, I can go to people's houses and the trees start talking to me in their front yard. Oh, I don't like being here. I'm not getting enough sun. Oh, don't put me next to that plant. It's a show pony. I want to shine on my own accord. Don't put me over there. The soil's too dry for my roots. Give me water. Give me water. Give me water. And it's like, oh my God, all these thoughts coming into my head. Because mostly I hear it inside my voice, but it's not my inside voice because I know my inside voice and I know my thoughts. So yeah, trees do talk to us. And how do we know unless we haven't tried it? So my suggestion here, we're talking about just trees, because there's some good stories coming today, guys. Okay? Let me go into your front yard and just say to your plants, do you want water? <clears throat> Can you please move a leaf if you want me to water you? Comment below if this stuff works for you, okay? please make a comment on this video if this stuff works because the more people who read these comments and they say oh my god this happens to me as well and oh my god could it happen to me as well the more we're starting to wake up yeah so go and experiment with your plants and say something to them like do you want water are you getting enough sunlight do you want me to put you in the shade today <laughs> And you put it out there as that caring intention and ask them to move. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing when they do. So if you do have an experience with plants, write it in the comments below, okay? Now the next one. I had a man come here one night. <laughs> Never met him before. This is going back about three years ago, before lockdowns, etc. And... He actually came over for a reading and as he walked in, he's this big guy, probably six foot two. I'm five foot seven, by the way. So I'm looking up at him and he's got this big black leather jacket on. And he came inside and I made him a cup of coffee and we're sitting out the back having a chat. And I said to him, how long have you had your leather jacket? And he said, about two months. And I said, I already knew that. I said, you because you got it from your friend called Gavin. And he looked at me and he said, what? 
you don't even know me, so how do you know who my friends are? And I said, not only do I know that you got it two months ago from your friend Gavin, but your leather jacket is now talking to me. And it's telling me that on the inside left, this is my left hand here, by the way, if you open up the left um, front, inside where you've got a pocket, there's actually two pockets, one at the top and one at the bottom. And the bottom one has got a tear inside it, so you can't put anything in that pocket. This guy stands up and he says, Linda, unzips his jacket because he hadn't unzipped it while he's been at my house. He opened it up. Sure enough, there's the two pockets and the bottom one's got this big tear in it so nothing can fit in there because it all just falls straight out. He said, how did you know that? I said, because your jacket is talking to me. So let's go there. What do I get? How do I get that information? One it's through connection because I'm a hugger and it's why I hug people when they come to my house or I see them because when I hug somebody I pick up on all their emotional frequencies anything associated to them could then come through so I do love hugging people because I've got that connection to them through touch so that could be a thing that you might want to try so you touch something and say okay give me all your you so you put it out as an intention I want to receive information I don't do it all the time because I mainly do it with consent okay I'm not a zapper and I'm certainly no vampire of energies okay please don't think that about me but when people come to my house I give them a hug and if it's something that wants to come through it comes through okay just wanted to clarify that so I said to this guy I said because I've touched your jacket it wants me to know what's going on with it because your jacket this is what I said to him your jacket actually has free will because it's a conscious being and he said what my leather jacket has free will to do what it wants and I said yes so think about that with your own clothes your furniture your cars etc darling everything has their own free will okay because it's all living consciousness all right so the next thing I want to tell you about is a bit of a sad story but it's actually a good story in the end a man came here and I was doing an aura cleanse on him so whenever I do an aura cleanse on somebody I'll just explain what it is unless you don't know I connect to their energy so I put my hand up um, and I sweep off all negative energies around people it's called sweeping okay so you sweep off all the negative energies and you send it out into the nether nether you don't want it in your house you certainly don't want it to attach to you okay um, so I was sweeping all this bad energy off this guy getting it out of my house and his mum popped in behind him and I said oh my god I've got this lady that she's just popped in and I was explaining what she looked like and he said that's my mum so as I looked at her, because it was past him, I got this splitting headache right here in my head. And I, I, I sort of nearly fell over. And I, I, as I got this headache, I went, oh, 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 like this. And I nearly fell over. And the man looked at me and he said, my God, that's my mum. And she's been doing that all week. So I said to him, my God, is she still alive? Because usually when I see them like that, they're deceased, you know, like a medium sees spirits right so he said yeah she lives just, just over four suburbs away so I said to him mate you've got to take her straight to a hospital I think she's either going to have a stroke or she's about to have like a brain aneurysm or a hemorrhage or something is about to occur with her so he shortly left so it was about six o'clock when he left and it was a Sunday night um, on the Wednesday afternoon I got a phone call from this guy and he said, Linda, I want to be honest with you. I did not believe you when you said that about my mum. I went home and stuffed around for a few hours and went to bed. But in the morning, I thought I'd ring my mum. So now it's Monday morning, right? Monday morning, I rang my mum just to see how she was. And she said she's having this bad headache. So he told me that he went over, picked her up, and took her over to the hospital which is about a half hour drive from where I am now 
Not only did they put her in for straight away emergency brain surgery on the Monday afternoon, the doctor came Tuesday afternoon when he was up there seeing his mum. The doctor came in and said if we had not operated on her within that day or the next, she would have died of a brain hemorrhage because she had bleeding on her brain. Isn't that a gorgeous story? Thank goodness he came when he did. He would have lost his mother otherwise. So see how whatever, you know, these are synchronicities that we talk about. Why did he come to me at that specific day? And what? how did I pick up on that on his mother? So she got it gone and get fixed. I hope she's still alive. You know, that was about two or three years ago now that he came here, that guy. So how did I get that information? Because again, it's that connectivity. Our energy emits around us. So my bottle of water here, it has an energy field around it. So when I actually touch it, my energy is now connecting with the water. So because he's connected to his mother, when I've done this aura cleanse on him, I'm connecting to him, which is connected to his mother's energy. That is how this stuff works. It's all through energetic connections. Okay? All right. So what a great story that one was. Now, so we've spoken about trees. We've spoken about clothing. Spoken about injuries. Let's go to cars. Jeez, I love this one. You know, it's now to the point when people come to my house, I'll get a pen and paper out. And I write... Now, you've got to remember here, I've never seen these people before. They ring me or they text me or they email me and they say, can I please have a reading? So let's just say they say, okay, can I come over at 10 o'clock tomorrow? So about 9.30, before they come, I do a big cleanse out. I do my singing bowl and I think about all my good intentions. Um, please don't make this about my own ego today. Please allow me to receive any information regarding this person so it's all accurate from what you want them to hear. I'm just the receiver and the telecommunication device in this. So I do that process every time I see somebody. So when I do that, I get a lot of information about cars. So before these people even turn up, I'll write down something like Red Ford, hatch problem with the front tire and then I write it on a piece of paper sometimes I draw pictures of what they look like as well the people but I'm staying with cars okay so I'll write this information down and what I do is I fold it up and I stick it under the cushion on my chair so it's already there so when they come in they sit down and I'm looking outside at their red Ford their hatch and I think, I got it today. So they're sitting on the piece of paper because it's under the cushion of the chair. And they say, oh, I don't know if, I'm a, if you're a real psychic. You know, I, I want some proof. And I say to them, pick up your chair and look what's underneath it. So they pull out this piece of paper. <laughs> Red Ford hatch front tire problem. They look at the car out my window and they say, how did you know that? Well, you wanted proof. Because sometimes they know, remember I have this chat about half an hour before I ever read it, they know that a sceptic is coming. So they give me information before they arrive. So cars, you've got to think about what a car's made of. Steel is natural products that they uh, manufacture into the vehicle body shapes, etc., Tires are rubber, which is again natural. All our fuels, oils, water inside the engine, that's all natural fibers, which water and oil still have a consciousness, you know. Um, so cars are living. Oh, look at all the leathers. You've got your cotton seat covers, etc. Your upholstery, it's all made of natural fibers, yes. So these cars are actually living consciousnesses. So how can we communicate with our cars? whoever has right <laughs> it's not something that we wake up today and say oh I wonder if I can talk to cars today but we can so walk out to your car and just look at your car 
and you say to it like you send it out from here like you're asking it if it wants a cup of coffee on your inside voice would you like a cup of coffee so you put it out like that intention and what you do is you say can you please show me where you've got a problem or can you please tell me what's wrong with you or do you are you happy with me driving you (laughs) okay because a lady came here one day and I'd actually written down big black truck (laughs) that's what I wrote big black truck she turned up in this huge four-wheel drive black with a big ute on the back you know oh my god huge black truck and I wrote down egotistical so when she turned up I said my god your car it is so egotistical it loves being on the road it loves people looking at it oh my god this is such a masculine car I said please do not have little rubber duckies or anything floating from the rear vision mirror because your car's gonna hate that I said it's big and tough it wants you know it's got balls of steel this car so um, if you're gonna put anything on it put a bull bar on the back (laughs) she said funny thing I was actually at the shop the other day looking at bull bars see why did I even think of bull bar you know I could have said oh it wants a decal of something really tough on the back window but why did I say bull bar Uh ah you got to watch what I say, right? Because I know this stuff. So let's talk now about the knowing, okay? How do we know things? Simple example is, as you're watching this today or tonight or whenever, think about something that you wear in your cupboard or in wherever it is. So think about an item of your clothing. You know what color it is, right? You know whether it's a dress, a shirt, a jacket, jeans, socks or shoes, right? You know that information about that item of clothing, right? That is what I get. It's called the knowing. You just know someone's got three sisters and a brother. You just know that they're the elder sibling. Like I am the youngest of my three, oh well there's three of us, I've got two elder sisters. So I know that I'm the youngest of out of my family. You know this information. So today was just a little touch of things that I do. A little touch of how to get it as well. So as a closing gift, here's what I'd like to offer you all today. I'm going to put out some energy, right? Oh gosh, I can feel it coming already. I'm going to put out this energy. doesn't matter if you're watching this in 10 years' time. If there's an ability that you want, I'm going to do a little gift today. How do we get psychic abilities? People don't realise all we have to do is ask. So first of all, When we ask, be grateful. Thank you so much. Then we say our intention of getting these gifts. Because believe me, if you want something just to better yourself, if you want something just to make yourself better in your own world, it won't work. Because that's called selfishness and conceit. You're conceited. So don't do it for the bad reasons always do it for the better of others okay I always ask for my own personal health so then I can help others keep me healthy so I can look after others okay see how you're twisted into the positive so we always be thankful pardon me have the intention of doing it for the right and the good reasons of the universe and then all we have to ask is for what gifts we want and believe that it will happen So here's our little gift, guys. I, Linda, thank you so much. I am so grateful for all the opportunities, all the abilities and all the opportunities that I have to help others. Thank you so much. I am so honoured to be in the presence of the archangels, angels and all the other ascended beings of the universe. Thank you so much for choosing me. I am so grateful that people today want to learn how to do this as well. So please, no, this is nothing about me. 
<clears throat> but if there is people watching this today who want these abilities, allow them to receive the information, the abilities and the gifts that they are requesting today. Please allow them to experience these abilities and allow them to have confirmations that it's real so they learn to believe and trust that your eternal energies of the universe truly exist thank you so much I'm so honoured to be in your presence Amen I always say Amen at the end see how that is what I did now guys what I would like to do if you do start talking to trees or furniture or your clothing starts talking to you or your car tells you that it needs oil please comment below and tell me and let others read your comments if you want so then we get this word out that all this stuff is real because at the end of the day when we go home it all is have a good day guys To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.